So if you're anything like me, you probably have always favored complex numbers over vectors. Their multiplication makes a lot more sense, and they're just that, numbers. But as I learn more and more about vectors, they do actually explain way more phenomena in our universe than complex numbers can. Take the example of physics. The formula for work is work is equal to force dotted with our displacement. The dot here represents the dot product, which is a type of vector multiplication. Or take the example of our universe. Well, it's 3D. And complex numbers, sadly, they're 2D. And because of this, many times when describing our 3D universe, complex numbers just don't cut it. But even after all of that, I would sooner embrace something such as the quaternions rather than vectors. Why quaternions, you ask? Well, because quaternions actually have a deep connection to both of the vector products, and they're four-dimensional one more dimension than we've been asking for. What is that connection, you may ask? Well, stay tuned to find out. Or check out the timestamp in the description if I leave one, which I probably won't, so you're gonna have to watch the entire video through. Sad. Anyway, back to the math, so let's go. Now, if you don't already know what quaternions are, let me give a very brief overview. Quaternions are just the extension to the complex numbers introducing four more non-principal square roots of negative one, j, negative j, k, and negative k. And all of the complex numbers are related by this equation, i times j times k equals negative one, and their multiplication is non-commutative, meaning something like a times b is not always equal to b times a. They even have their own multiplication table, but this table is kind of long. So the way I remember how to multiply quaternions together is first you draw a circle, then you write down arrows moving clockwise on the circle, then write down the numbers i, j, and k. Then when you multiply two numbers together, move in the direction of the order which you multiplied them. If you move in the opposite direction of an arrow, then the result will be negative. So from this we get the results like i times j equals k, and i times k equals negative j. But anyway, enough about what these quaternions are, now I will show you the connection between these quaternions and vector multiplication. To start, let's see what happens when you multiply two quaternions together that have no real part. These can be of pretty much any form. For example, i plus j plus k times negative 2i plus 4j minus 3k, or any other real numbers we want to use as the coefficient. We'll keep it pretty general for the computation, but just remember that these coefficients can be any real number. And so now the two complex numbers we will be multiplying together are r1 and r2, where r1 is equal to ai plus bj plus ck, and r2 is equal to xi plus yj plus zk. Now this is going to be a lot of quaternion algebra, which can be very tedious at times. And done. That was a lot, but we can start to see the vector multiplication hidden inside. There are three terms here I want to focus on right now. The negative ax, the negative by, and the negative cz. This should look very familiar to anyone who has done a dot product before. It is exactly the negative of the dot product of r1 and r2, if r1 and r2 were vectors. Now what about the other terms? They are exactly the cross product of r1 and r2, respectively. And so it turns out that the product of r1 and r2 is equal to the cross product of r1 and r2 minus the dot product of r1 and r2. Cool, right? This result can be used to prove that any unit quaternion with no real part is another non-principal square root of negative 1. Which written down looks like for any quaternion of the form ai plus bj plus ck, is equal to, say, q, and if a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to 1, then q squared is equal to negative 1, or q is another square root of negative 1. So using the fact we just derived, we can get that q squared is equal to q cross q minus q dot q. Now the cross product of any vector with itself is always 0. And so we get that q squared is equal to negative q dot q. And this q dot q can be expanded to a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Now as we said, if this is a unit quaternion, this is equal to 1. Then q squared is equal to negative 1. Much easier than doing all the tedious quaternion algebra. If anyone knows out there if there is any underlying reason for this, rather than it just being a coincidence, please feel free to comment why. But anyway, I hope you found this at least mildly exciting. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you enjoyed this content.